Good evening and welcome to the Hoosier Huddle Roundtable. Today we are uh, previewing Indiana's next game against the Idaho Vandals. Uh, we welcome in Brian Marceau from uh, co-host of Tubbs at the Club. First of all, great to have you on. Uh, great to have somebody who covers Idaho, talks about their football team. Uh, and then second thing, what is Tubbs at the Clubs? I'll answer in reverse order. So Tubbs at the Club. It's an homage. There's kind of a long story to the podcast being created that your listeners could not possibly care less about. The part they might be interested in is there's a pretty famous sports bar in the Northwest, specifically Moscow, Idaho, called The Club. And uh, the go-to drink of just about anyone in Moscow at The Club is a tub. Um, if you are a discerning fellow, it's a tub of Rainier specifically. But that'd be it. Like the guy who started our website actually typed out the code for the website at the club. And yeah, we just kept it since then. Um, it's also, you know, it's made sure that even though we've got those Idaho colors in the logo, we have received no cease and desist notifications yet. So uh, yeah, let us, let us give a shout out to Moscow and, you know, understood University of Idaho and not have to rename ourselves after week one. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that. Yeah, so Idaho is coming into the game 0-1, a hard, hard-fought loss up at Washington State on uh, on Saturday night. It, it was a game that, that you guys took a 10-0 lead, uh, had a long fumble return for a touchdown, um, forced three fumbles. Uh, just take us through what um, what that game was like. Well, look, that's the first game for new our Idaho's new head coach, Jason Eck who for he came to Idaho from South Dakota State, which, you know, if you're Big Ten guys and you guys don't know FCS football, um, South Dakota State is one of the top two teams in the Missouri Valley Football Conference, which in the FCS world, that's essentially like the SEC or the Big Ten. So Idaho, it's kind of like a Pac-12 school poaching an offensive coordinator from Ohio State in terms of like caliber of hire for the school. So it's Jason X first game. Um, you know, fan base is pretty stoked. We honestly been beat down the last nine years for specifically the last five years, 2018 Idaho moved down from FBS to the FCS mainly got kicked out of the conference and had no real option B since then it's been pretty, pretty rough few years. So first off, people are just stoked for a new coach. He's doing everything right, but eventually you have to play the games. You got to win the games. Second. Yeah. I, you, like you said, Idaho draws first blood. We score the first 10 points in the game. Well, WSU is a 29 and a half point favorite in that game. So Idaho knows this is house money, but yeah, we uh, hung with WSU wire to wire. The result was in doubt until an interception. Idaho quarterback, Giovanni McCoy threw with 12 seconds left in the game. So, I mean, honestly, it's the best I've ever felt walking away from a loss. Uh, Idaho showed pretty significant growth on the defensive end, in particular uh, secondary team itself, just character wise, looks scrappy in a way that it just has not in a very long time. Yeah, that we were uh, following along and obviously watching some of the game, you know, with a, an IU perspective. But let's talk about Giovanni McCoy here, freshman quarterback on the road. I would say for the most part, looks pretty good. I would say also found his number one target in Jermaine Johnson at receiver during the game or Jackson, excuse me, in the game. What did you think of McCoy in his game of the season? McCoy is a red shirt freshman. He threw past two games last season. Idaho's had, had pretty rough quarterback health last couple of years. And that is uh, not uh, insignificant in part of why we have coaching change, of course. So McCoy, uh, he's he's a slight looking dude. He's his foot speed is actually not that great, but he's got a guy has a cannon for our level. Um, he's he here in respect of Idaho fans last season. His first start came against Eastern Washington. Then he played against Montana. Just got his ass kicked a few times and. Uh, like you're in people's respect by getting right back up, taking the hits. Uh, it's kind of that that intangible leadership thing that honestly coaching the, this coaching staff has been on our show and they've referenced that multiple times. So, you know, against Washington state, we'll, we'll probably get to it. Idaho's weakness, clearly offensive line at this point, McCoy was running for his life. Essentially the whole game got sacked six times. Could have got sacked by six or seven more. So relative to that pressure, 
we're, we're definitely okay with how Giovanni McCoy looked. He's got the talent to be a solid FCS quarterback for sure. Uh, and you know, he, he threw two picks. They were both forced. One was at the end of the game, and Idaho was clearly trying to win that game. Uh, the other was, it was the kind of mistake a red shirt freshman will make, you know, should have held on the ball quarterback or, you know, go four, yard, four yards, get the first down, trying to force something in a game where if Idaho is going to win, we have to make some plays. Uh, the kind of mistakes you're, you're going to be okay with those types of mistakes. So no, Javon McCoy, uh, honestly, relative to what we saw last season, he looks significantly better, particularly, like I said, he's under duress about six or seven plays and those six or seven plays do look good. Question is if Idaho can give him enough time. Uh, having played, it is a weird series. When you think of Indiana and Idaho, it was scheduled when Idaho was back in the FCS. Um, does it give you any hope um, or, you know, a benefit that, that you played at Indiana last year? You're familiar with the stadium, familiar um, – with the kind of atmosphere and then playing on the road at, at Wazoo too. Is there any kind of comfort in, in that? Yeah, honestly, in two facets. One, that the, the culture of this team and this, the new coaching staff at Idaho, it's, it's night and day. And I, look, I'm sure you've heard many people, maybe even at Indiana yourself, where you hear about a new coach and you know the, the language around the new staff is that, hey, things are radically different. And then it turns out to be like, you know, a slightly different version of the same thing. That's absolutely not the case with Idaho. So in one sense, yeah, there's going to be familiarity for some of Idaho's players. Uh, also, I'm really hopeful that the Indiana roster is pretty uh, set in assuming that the character of the team they saw most recently is the character they're going to see because for an FCS team to stay close to a big 10 team or to, you know, fingers crossed on our end, pull the upset. We have to have a few things go our way. One of which is we need to get a poor effort out of the big 10 team, which is you guys. So uh, yeah, maybe it, the familiarity certainly could help, but also in the opposite sense of if Indiana feels familiar with a roster and staff, that's completely different misunderstanding that, that's one of the breaks you'd say Idaho fans probably think we need to have. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting matchup. And, and, you know, the similarities, it's also week two. It's also a night kick on Saturday night. So kind of, kind of just interesting. Let's talk a little bit of the defensive side of things for Idaho. Um, IU, obviously most of our fans are going to be, you know, we'll, we'll recognize some faces from last year. seems like a good amount of new faces on defense who are like your two or three key players if, if you guys want to keep this close or even win that you say these two or three guys really, really have to have good games on defense for Idaho? Idaho punches above its weight class. It's front seven, particularly. It's linebackers and edge rushers. So our one of our starting linebackers, his name is Paul Moala. He's a transfer from Notre Dame. He played at Notre Dame. This isn't a red shirt. This isn't a walk-on guy. He's at Idaho because he blew both his Achilles. He forced a fumble against WSU. The Cougars would tell you Paul Moala is doing fine. Uh, we also have another lead tackler from last game, uh, Favai Favai, transfer from Washington State. He was preseason all big sky this season. Seems 11 tackles. Those two are two of the linebacking names where you're, you're just going to hear those guys being involved in plays. You're also going to hear um, edge rusher Giuliano Falonico. He's a transfer uh, – defensive end, sorry. He's a transfer from USC, uh, Southern Cal. He Again, he played at Southern Cal. Uh, can't tell you why he ended up at, at Idaho because he, he didn't have the injury issues that uh, Paul Moala had. But those are – I guess those are three of the guys in the front seven – whose name you're going to hear uh, in secondary Matthias Bertram safety. He's transferred from New Mexico. He forced a fumble against Washington state. He's the guy, he's the guy who actually stripped the fumble that, have, that was returned for a touchdown. Our best cornerback is Marcus Harris. He's the guy who returned that for a touchdown, but he's a transfer from Oregon state from a couple of years ago. Those are probably five names that if Indiana fans are certainly going to hear those guys names called and if Idaho is going to have, have any sort of influence on the outcome of this game, uh, those I mean, look, every guy has to play at their best when it's FCS uh, big 10, but there's no way Idaho, if Idaho is going to keep this game close, there's no way you're not hearing about big plays from those five. Yeah. And then staying with the defense here, Indiana, I'm not sure if you saw today announced their starting right tackle, uh, 
Red Matt for, for the season now with the tornado that he suffered week one against Illinois. O-line definitely showed some growing pains in week one, even though it was a lot of familiar faces from, from last season. Um, what did you see running game-wise from Washington State? Because we do feel IU is going to kind of try to use this game to potentially mix and match some combos at O-line, try to get the running game going because just did not have much success against Illinois. So especially front seven, but you know the D-line specifically, you know, what are we going to watch for? Is it going to be stunts? Are we rotating a lot of guys? Because um, it should be an interesting matchup with, uh, we have a D2 transfer at right tackle who will likely start on Saturday. So defensive coordinator for Idaho, he's of course new as well. His name is Rob Orich, comes over from South Dakota, not South Dakota State, South Dakota, which is another Missouri Valley Conference school. Um, he, we had him on the show. And uh, he said one of the things that Vandal fans are going to see different this season than last season is uh, doing a lot uh, to try to disguise coverage, disguise blitzes, so you're not necessarily sending extra guys. But um, against Washington State, look, Washington State has – I'm talking about the quarterback just for a second because it really is – relates to you know D-line front seven. Cam Ward for Washington State is probably the best quarterback – Idaho is going to face this season. He was an FCS player last year, threw for 46 touchdowns, uh, held him to 215 yards, 19 yards was longest pass play. Part of that is because Idaho relative to an FC school against a pass school, uh, we're able to get some pressure for sure. Um, if offensive line is not necessarily a strength right now for Indiana, or at least depth at offensive line is not necessarily a strength. Um, I would expect Idaho is going to do their best to get the, uh, you know, the, pair of on, on the other edge rusher i already talked about juliana fall and nico the other edge rusher hits up his name's leo tomba he picked up two sacks against Ida, against washington state he's a he's a lot he had been a linebacker in previous scheme uh those two guys the, the, if you hear if you hear names of who's going to get pressure on the quarterback it's going to be fall and nico or it's going to be tomba um i like what i saw out of idaho against washington state now caveat idaho is less physically large on the defensive line this season than last season we a couple pretty talented guys graduate one of them noah ellis was hanging on an nfl training camp roster most recently we don't have the exact guys we're probably a bit faster uh, of course in turn raw size uh, that could be an area where like for idaho against fcs teams we feel okay but yeah even without the depth you guys want uh, you know, that's a, that's kind of a, a red flag for me right now sure. of can Idaho get the kind of pressure we want? Cause now shifting to the run game, like you talk, WSU is able to average about 5.4 yards per rush. Now, weirdly, it was the least impressive 5.4 yards per rush I've ever seen because Washington state, again, like this was, this was a game in doubt until the last 12 seconds and WSU, they were able to run. Okay. Uh, they weren't able to break off any huge plays, which has been a point of emphasis for the staff uh, to, I mean, to obviously be as aggressive as you can, but to not get beat on one play or to not get beat by dumb mistakes where, you know, the score goes from three, zero to 10, zero pretty quick. I, I want to talk about you guys went, went for a fourth down seven times. Is that just indicative of the situation they were in, or is this coaching staff going to be aggressive especially against another FBS team and, and roll the dice in those situations. Oh, no, that's who this coaching staff is. There is one four down of, of those, those seven that you referenced. One was last drive of the game where, okay, well, there's no choice but to go. So like, Hey, let's maybe say that the number of gambles is six. Now one of those was a fourth and nine that I, I think was a mistake, but Otherwise, no, no, Jason Eck, he was, he was a good offensive coordinator at South Dakota State. He's not the primary play caller. He's, he told us that, and he's told multiple Idaho media figures he's not the primary play caller. But that, that personality of Idaho is playing to win and against their teams, I was going to have to make something happen to, to pick up wins. Uh, I was not shocked at all that the number was, yeah, at the end of the game, was seven. You know, Jason Eck was okay going forward on fourth and four with not quite favorable field position in a close game. 
because in, again, in his mind, Idaho is playing these games to win. I know, I know, I know at the literal level, FCS teams play these to fund their athletic department, but you're not going to tell Washington state fans who, who saw that game that uh, Idaho was not treating this as something more than a week to get through without injuries. So if the game is competitive, I absolutely would expect we're going to see fourth and short or fourth and short ish. Idaho goes for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I love that attitude personally. Um, so yeah, that'll, that'll definitely be something to watch. Uh, back over to offense. Now let's stick with the line play seven sacks for the Washington state defense. Um, it does seem like Giovanni is, is mobile enough to have some escapability. So that'll be something to watch for. I'd imagine um, were some of those freshman mistakes is that week one line play, or is that an area where IU should be able to have a, a similar number production wise in terms of sacks and tackles for loss? Well, it's an area that every team who plays Idaho, that's going to be the point of attack. Mm -hmm. The, in the, in the FCS world, just to give you guys a quick background, the, the schools that develop elite offensive lines at the FCS level, like your North Dakota States and, hey, South Dakota State when Jason Eck was there, we're not, look, we're not stealing recruits from the Big Ten. What those schools do is they take gambles on guys with the right frame. They have great, uh, great strength and conditioning programs, and they build offensive linemen. Well, I've been here for a summer. He can't build that type of offensive lineman in Idaho the reporting out of practice that we've seen and also that we've been given is first string offensive line for Idaho is solid for a big sky team. It's a cliff from string one to string two, because that's the one realistically, the one position that it's going to take time for us to grow. And we just didn't get the transfers in that you, you hope we would have gotten. So I expect Indiana is going to look at that WSU tape and they're going to say, okay, well, we're going to be aggressive because look, Idaho does have some talent relative to an FCS team, but look, we, we, we have these guys on the road and also a real road trip. WSU is an eight mile drive from Moscow for, for Idaho. Uh, you know, it's going to be a hostile -ish environment. Best way to, to take care of an FCS team is to punch them in the mouth early. So yes, I expect you'll at least see a similar strategy with probably similar ish results. Yeah. Um, and then Behind, sorry, Sammy, to cut you off there. And then behind that O-line real quick from me here, looks like besides Giovanni, I think four different backs got a carry. Um, is that, are those depth chart battles? Are we going to see multiple looks where there are two running back sets or is it, you know, just to get guys touches in week one? I was honestly surprised we didn't see more two running back sets because uh, that was kind of a staple of Jason X play calling it South Dakota state. And suddenly he just openly said team is going to use more of, uh, but that's our part that, that you saw from WSU just get touched on a couple names for your listeners. Pay attention to yep. uh, true freshman, Anthony Woods. He led Idaho with nine carries 52 yards. Uh, he was not listed on the depth chart last week. All indication is he's not running back right now. Guy's strong and, He's fast, right? He's, he's one of those kind of recruits who an FCS school sees playing like, okay, I have no idea how people whiffed on this guy, but I'm, I'm going to enjoy him while he's here. I'm happy he's playing as, retro, as a true freshman. Number two running back is by Rashawn Johnson. He's the other back who had nine carries, rushed for nine yards. So like, obviously that's not that effective, but he was a third team, all big sky selection last season. He's a, he's, a, he's a pretty solid FCS running back. I'd certainly call Woods right now on paper more explosive or the guy who uh, might have a higher ceiling overall. Jo Rashawn Johnson's also pretty had injury issues virtually every season. So fingers crossed that changes this year. But those look to be the top two guys. Uh, Brian, I wanted to ask, if, if you're a fan and you're watching the game, what is one matchup? on uh, the defensive side of the ball. So Idaho's defense that you're looking at, um, it could be individual, it could be a, a unit, um, but what is one matchup you're watching and, and keeping an eye on? You know, this week one, Idaho's cornerback play and, and safety as well. So just secondary as a whole was absolutely fantastic relative to what we're used to. Idaho last season, Look, we didn't get a ton of secondary transfers. Our only real secondary transfers are wide receivers that were converted this season to becoming defensive backs. In 
conference play last year, eight conference games, Idaho picked off two total passes. So the, the secondary just been terrible for a while. And last week, I thought the guys looked pretty, pretty solid. Look, they're, again, they're, you know, our tallest cornerback, Marcus Harris, is six foot. So, look, there's some size issues FCS schools can't fix. But I, I'm re- I really am curious from the Idaho end. I'm really interested from the Idaho end. Can guys like, you know, cornerback Marcus Harris, can guys like safety Matthias Bertram, can they continue to have the kind of footprint on the game that we saw this last week? So again, Cam Ward, very good quarterback for Washington State. He, abs- he did not trash Idaho. Washington State has multiple preseason all Pac-12 wide receivers on their team. They did not trash Idaho. So is that a what is that a one week thing? Because playing Pullman week one of a new coach, everyone's a, you know ten percent more jacked than they might be later into the season. Or you no, know, like this this new new strategy, uh, new coaching staff, new new attitude. Teams looking a lot more scrappy. That's here to stay. That's what I want to see. Is you know we're Big Sky team is not going to shut down. Uh, big 10 big 10 receiving core but can we make their lives more difficult than maybe they think kind of like it happened at washington state that's what i'm paying attention to yeah i think that's interesting i definitely agree uh i use quarterback connor Bazelak transferred in from mizzou as soon as debut um, on friday night through for over 300 yards against illinois so i think that definitely i think there's some you know two guys at 18 catches for iu so I think a lot of fans are interested, interested to see, you know, in the next couple of weeks of non-conference play here, you know, who potentially are the other guys that are going to step up. So I think starting with this Saturday, that's, uh, that's also an interesting one. I have one here that's not related to the game that I actually think is pretty cool. So I saw that Idaho for road games is doing like bars and watch parties on the field in the dome um like selling tickets is that have you been to that or is that new this year or i just think that's a really cool idea in general dude that's that's new this year the like one thing i'm going to add here the maybe the only thing that anyone the world's going to say oh thank god covid did this in the covid spring season idaho played in spring 2021 Mm -hmm. that's when idaho could first have could sell alcoholic beverages yeah that was you know new it was it's Mm -hmm. a state board of education rule there's nothing Idaho could do about it but hey that changed then so, uh, yeah, this is a first year thing where there's a uh, like special tickets where you can, it's a no host bar. So like you still got to pay for the drinks, but that's a new thing. And, um, I can't tell you yet how it is, but mm-hmm. I can tell you, I'm interested in hearing about reports. Yeah. I just, I saw it online. I read the release and stuff. I just thought that was, that was a pretty good cool idea. So maybe we'll, uh, if we ever play there, we'll have to make Sammy and I'll make the trip and, uh, and join you. So we'll, uh, we'll do a game in there, but Sammy, what else you got here before we, uh, before we start to wrap up with Brian? I, I just, you know, it, it's a game where if you're IU fans, you're, you, you hope you can roll um, and work on that running game. But you saw last year, Idaho with Trey Walker came in. They, they have some talented dudes. This is a program that, um, they're historically very tough and very, very, you know, even though they're at the FCS level now, they're a very good program with a, a lot of history, um, a proud history there. So it's, it's not going to be a, a pushover, but it could be a, a get right game for Indiana's offensive line if they can, um, you know, find somebody to fill in there for, for Bedford. Yeah, totally agree. I think, you know, and we'll have more stuff on it during the week, but um, like we talked about with Brian, I think definitely some interesting matchups, you know, on both sides when each team has the ball. Um, IU fans from, from our perspective, really hoping again, like I said, who emerges after the first two guys at receiver, can we get a few younger guys in, especially in the running game and possibly the offensive line. And then defensively, I thought, and, you know, most of the fan base was pretty pleased with how the defense played against Illinois last Friday. So I think getting out of the game, one, healthy, and then two, without giving up some of the bigger plays. Um, because I do think you guys had what, six passing yards over – or six plays passing over 15 yards and then three in the running game. So, you know, only had 60-something yards rushing, but, you know, three chunk plays in the run game. So I think I use keys on defense, avoid the big plays, really make – you know, the redshirt freshman, Giovanni, grind out some drives and then work on some things. Uh, Brian, your final thoughts on the matchup this Saturday night before we uh, wrap up? 
Yeah, there's there's two other dudes that you guys will listeners of yours may be interested in. It's in the Idaho receiving room. You're correct. Uh, Jermaine Jackson was top target of Giovanni McCoy against Washington State. That was a bit of a curveball for Idaho. Mm-hmm. We have two receivers, Therese Trainer. He was third, third team all big sky last season. He's a six, six, three big athlete transfer from Western Kentucky. Then uh, he had two catches of 29 yards. I honestly expect he'd get more targets than Hayden Hatton. He was described in the game as a tight end. He had, two, not- he had t- two touchdowns against IU last year, I believe. Okay. And then, then and then he got hurt. Then um, Hayden Hatton, who in the WSU game was described as a tight end. He's not, t- he's not a tight end. He's a, no, he's uh, former a very tight good end. receiver. Yeah, former tight end. He was first team all big sky in the spring season and then sat out 2021 with injury. Mm-hmm. Those two guys combined for seven catches. I mean, not a, not a ton of yards that game. It's 43 yards. But uh, those guys are target number one and two, typically. <laughs> so uh, those are names that you might see pop out a little bit. Also, redshirt, not, sorry, not redshirt, true freshman, Jordan Dwyer, caught three passes for 39 yards and a touchdown uh, he had two of his big receptions and that fight in the final scoring drive idaho had um, he's another guy to pay attention to he's a again he's a true freshman who's working his way into the top four of the receiving room uh, in short relative to a big sky roster idaho's pretty talented in his receiving room uh running back like it's okay it's not not the best in conference not close to the worst uh, receiving the receiving room is honestly the room where I see the most guys. Whereas an Idaho fan, I keep thinking like, okay, please do not get poached by a Mountain West school for yeah. next season. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brian, we really appreciate one your time and then two your insight. I mean, you can definitely tell on this Zoom here, you know how how passionate and knowledgeable you are about the program. So for our listeners and anyone that's watching. Uh, could you go ahead and tell them, you know, about your site, your podcast, where they can follow you guys on social media um, so they can get some of the, uh, you know, perspective from you guys leading into the game on Saturday? Yeah, so on, for the most part, we're a YouTube podcast based. We have a website, tubsoftheclub.com. I will not accuse that of being the most updated website online. <laughs> so for the most part, if you Google Tubs of the Club, at Tubs of the Club YouTube, you're going to find our YouTube page. Our Twitter handle official account is at Tubbs at the Club. My official account is at Brian Marceau. But if, if you search the official Tubbs Twitter account, it's going to be pretty hard to not find my account and the other guys. Essentially, me and co-host Dallas Hammer and our producer Martin Heemstra, our handle is going to be listed there. Uh, we're pretty active online during games, which has been kind of a building thing for Idaho, us uh, to have, honestly, a stronger online presence uh, the university is mercifully starting to get in step with that on mm-hmm. this season in terms of like putting out some cool hype video stuff like that, which they're doing a great job of this season, but they certainly did not do a great job prior to this season. But if you're, you're looking for a little bit of the Idaho context for the game, uh, if you search tubs at the club, you're going to find all the handles you need. We preview Indiana on Tuesday. So uh, look, I know your listeners know you guys are more knowledgeable Indiana wise, but if you want to hear the Idaho centric take, We record Tuesday night. It's published as a podcast immediately, but it's on YouTube, of course, live right after. Yeah, that's outstanding. We'll we'll be sure to look out for that and share that with our fans as well. Sammy, uh, you want to close for us here? Yeah, I I want to thank Brian for jumping on, taking his time. I know he has to get back to uh, his family. Uh, Awesome stuff uh, on Idaho. Also, you know, uh, Indiana against Idaho. It's on Big Ten Network. on Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, I saw the Idaho site had it at 5.30 Pacific. It's 8 p.m. Eastern, according to the IU site. Um, you could uh, catch us on Twitter at Hoosier underscore huddle, on Instagram at the same handle. Um, subscribe, rate, review on YouTube, and uh, visit HoosierHuddle.com uh, for, for all your game uh, insights and IU updates. So.